from JBS Studios in Greater New York. This is the JBS News Update with Tisha Bader. I'm Tisha Bader with the JBS News Update for Monday, January the 30th, 2023. The victims of the terror attack Friday night in the Jerusalem neighborhood of Neve Yaakov were laid to rest over the weekend. A total of seven Israelis were murdered by a Palestinian terrorist as he opened fire at people just outside a synagogue in the neighborhood. He was shot dead by police. The victims were married couple 48-year-old Eli and 45-year-old Natalie Mizrahi, 56-year-old Rafael Ben Eliyahu, 68-year-old Shaul Chai, 59-year-old Irina Korolova, 26-year-old Ilya Sosansky, and 14-year-old Asher Natan. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu told his cabinet this was a reprehensible attack at the entrance to a synagogue on International Holocaust Remembrance Day. I thank my friend U.S. President Joe Biden, who spoke with me and expressed outrage and condolences over this terrible, murderous attack. I also thank the many other leaders, including from Arab countries, for standing alongside Israel at this time. The White House said in its statement of the Biden phone call that the president made clear that this was an attack against the civilized world. He offered all appropriate means of support to the government and people of Israel over the coming days. Friday night's attack was followed by another shooting Saturday morning near Jerusalem's Old City, where a 13-year-old Palestinian shot at a group of people walking down the street in the neighborhood of Silwan. The attacker was shot and wounded and then taken into custody. The injured were a 59-year-old Israeli man and his son, who was an off-duty officer in the IDF in his 20s, who the IDF said despite his severe injury, the officer acted calmly and fired and hit the terrorist. He and his father are said to be in serious but stable condition. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken landed at Ben-Gurion Airport in Israel today and upon arrival condemned the recent terror and called for calm. Blinken was greeted at the airport by Foreign Minister Eli Cohen and went directly to Jerusalem to meet with Prime Minister Netanyahu. The two later held a joint press conference where Netanyahu called Blinken's visit another continual expression of the unbreakable bonds between Israel and the U.S., and he spoke of what both countries share in common. We share common values, two strong democracies, which will remain, I assure you, two strong democracies. That a seeming reference to criticism and concern over Israel's planned judicial reforms. Netanyahu also thanked Blinken for U.S. military aid and standing up for Israel at the U.N., he spoke of the threat from Iran and pursuing more agreements with Arab countries, like with the Abraham Accords, and its impact for the future. I also believe that expanding the circle of peace, working to close, finally, the file of the Arab-Israeli conflict, I think would also help us achieve a workable solution with our Palestinian neighbors. Blinken opened his remarks, responding once again to the Friday night terror attack. Just as I did upon arrival in Israel, I had a chance to express directly to the Prime Minister my condolences and that of the United States government for the seven Israelis uh, who were killed in the horrific terrorist attack uh, earlier this week outside their synagogue. Uh, President Biden called the Prime Minister immediately after the attack to underscore the United States' steadfast support for Israel and its people, a message that I reaffirmed in the meeting we just had. In the context of this attack, and escalating violence, it's important that the government and people of Israel know America's commitment to their security remains ironclad. He also spoke of Iran, saying the U.S. and Israel were in agreement that Iran never be allowed to attain a nuclear weapon. Also speaking on efforts to strengthen the circle of peace and working towards a two-state solution between Israel and the Palestinians ending his remarks once again reaffirming the U.S.-Israel bond. One of the things that makes the partnership between us so strong is that it goes well beyond any one American or Israeli government. 
Few people understand that better than President Biden, who has worked closely with every Israeli Prime Minister since Golda Meir, and Prime Minister Netanyahu, who has worked closely with his share of American presidents. Quite a few. Throughout uh, the relationship between our countries, uh, what we come back to time and again is that it is rooted both in shared interests and in shared values. That includes our support for core democratic principles and institutions, including respect for human rights, the equal administration of justice for all, the equal rights of minority groups, the rule of law, free press, a robust civil society, and the vibrancy of Israel's civil society has been on full display of late. A firebomb was thrown at a synagogue in New Jersey this weekend. The incident took place at 3.19 a.m. at Temple Ner Tamid in Bloomfield. Police saying the device did not burst into flames and there were no injuries or real damage. Surveillance footage shows a masked man lighting and throwing the firebomb at the front door of the synagogue and fleeing the scene. NorthJersey.com cited the congregation's Rabbi Mark Katz, saying no act of hate can stop the power of religious freedom. Well, with the commemoration of International Holocaust Remembrance Day this past Friday, special ceremonies and programs were held around the world from NATO headquarters in Brussels to a special exhibit in Kenya, a first-of-its-kind permanent exhibit at the Crossroads of Civilization Museum in the United Arab Emirates, and here in New York, the second annual New York State Goes Yellow campaign, where major landmarks across the state were lit up in memory and honor of Holocaust victims Friday night, including at Niagara Falls, Grand Central Terminal, Penn Station, One World Trade Center, and the Empire State Building, in partnership with Voices for Truth and Humanity. Taking a look now at our programming for tonight on JBS for Monday, January the 30th at 7 o'clock, a discussion on the influences of the Pharisees on Jesus, Christianity, and anti-Semitism today. At 8, Abigail Pogerman speaks with Emily Tamkin about her book, Bad Jews, which examines the evolution of Jewishness throughout American history to make her case against the term bad Jew, which weaponizes, she writes, members of the community against each other or themselves. At 8.30, Benjamin Anthony talks about similarities he sees between Jew hatred in the U.S. and his life growing up in the U.K. At 9, Mark Golub sits down with Rabbi Stuart Weinblatt on L'Chaim. At 10, veteran comic writer Alan Zweibel speaks at the 92nd Street Y. And coming up next, I speak with director of the Religious Action Center of Reform Judaism, Rabbi Jonah Pesner, about efforts to prevent gun violence and the Jewish values that inform that advocacy. And that's the JBS News Update for Monday, January the 30th, 2023. I'm Tisha Bader. Stay healthy. Stay well.